No, it's kind of uh, fascinating on many levels. I hope you find it to be the same. Talk about black holes, but for a second, I have to talk about the premise of this. And this has been an article written, uh, interview of uh, George Shepplain, a physicist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Now, that's extremely prestigious. I bet he has a PhD or two. There are people that do their, uh, their uh, postdoctorate uh, degree and write a nice long paper and it's peer reviewed, which is just you know, a bunch of uh, fools agreeing with each other. They have some nice paperwork hanging on the wall and they work in uh, prestigious places like Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. To them it's a job. They come home and they turn their brain off. Whatever drove them to that point, they, they get burned out. You know, they regurgitate the same stuff that they're taught to believe in. They don't, most of them don't, actually have an innate passion to understand, especially when it comes to physicists, Mother Nature and the mechanics of Mother Nature. So, superficially, an unintelligent person, and I've encountered many of them, will say, well, you know, who should I li believe? A guy with two PhDs or one PhD, you know, who works at Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. Or, you know, a tattooed uh, bull guy sitting behind a desk <laughs> making YouTube videos. And my answer to that is, is that intelligence and wisdom cannot be bought and they have nothing to do with a piece of paper hanging on the wall. And I love going deep in my mind and figuring out the mechanics of Mother Nature. And of course, Mother Nature must necessitatively, as the Greeks called it, ananke, follow natural order. And it can't be absurd and illogical. Anyway, this is uh, about black holes, and I've made quite a few video, videos of black, about black holes. And of course, calling them black holes is kind of ridiculous. They're not holes, obviously. So some people, will, they love to leave comments saying, oh, black holes exist, don't exist. Well, you know, based upon what? When I mean, we see galactic jets, they're also two called uh, um, astrophysical jets. They're actually emitted at the geomagnetic uh, precessional points, kind of like a spinning top. Um, from these black holes, both at the center of the galaxy. And they have around them a toroidal ring, but the uh, center of the black hole, of course, is nothing. There's no mass or magnitude. It's something that's supermassive regarding matter, great conglomeration of matter, but it has no magnitude. And until someone understands the conjugate geometry of the universe, that being the hyperboloid and the torus, they can never understand the premise of a black hole. Whether we call it a black hole is completely irrelevant. I like to talk about his uh, dark energy star here in a second. What he said, it was an article, it's a new article from this prestigious physicist from Lawrence Livermore. Okay, And he actually talks about the toroidal ring around uh, the phenomena that we call a black hole and these astrophysical jets that are actually shooting matter, specifically hydrogen, trillions of miles um, out into... Uh, uh, out into uh, out from the galaxies, or uh, you know, just out into space. And hydrogen, of course, is the most basic form of matter. And of course, it's nothing other than super high energy light. And all matter is compounded hydrogen. So this makes perfect sense. And of course, the toroid is the three-dimensional force vector, you know, of the loss of energy or the dielectric. Anyway, a black hole is a supermass with no magnitude because the only thing that keeps anything in the visible universe is magnetism and magnetism alone. Every atom in volume, as measured in picometers, i.e. its interatomic volume, is nothing other than a magnetodielectric dynamo. That volume of that atom exists only due to one thing, magnetism. You remove magnetism, you've removed magnitude. Now, the mass might still be there, but there is no magnitude. What is a black hole? A black hole is a super mass that has no magnitude because, why? It has attained to point source singularity, is vanished from our physical universe. We have no parallel for it here on Earth, and that's why it's so hard for human beings to grasp it. It's a supermass with no magnitude. It doesn't make any sense. It's supermassive. It's compo composed of, say, 10,000 volumes of our stars. Maybe a little bit smaller, maybe a whole lot larger. It's a supermassive black hole, a regular black hole. Who cares? We're interested in the idea, the premise, that must follow necessitatively Occam's razor. What is a black hole? A supermass with no magnetism. No magnitude, excuse me. Which means the dielectric has overthrown magnetism's ability to keep anything within the physical universe. You can actually see this, and I've given demonstrations, and I've given a lecture on this, not about that specific point, but shown the image. Uh, in the case of, I don't have one here, 
a really, really powerful N55 or N58 Gauss neodymium iron boron magnet. It has a huge black hole right at the center there. A magnet is not specifically magnetism. It is both magnetodielectric object. Yes? What defines a magnet, of course, is qualitative, not quantitative. Anyway, the more powerful magnet actually has a smaller spatial, um, spatial uh, magnetic field around it because the dielectric is greatly increased. People think a more powerful magnet has a more powerful or larger voluminous magnetic field. Now, the field is more powerful, but the spatial volume of the magnetism, this is the important point, on a more powerful magnet, while it is more powerful, it is smaller. Let me repeat that. It's very important because if you want to understand a black hole, I'll give you a very, very, very simple analogy. You can take two identical uh, cylinder magnets. They could be spheres. They could be anything. Anyway, you get one to be an N38 Gauss, the other one to be an N58 Gauss. You can put them underneath the ferro cell, the super cell, and I have videos of this. I have many videos of this. The more powerful magnet has a huge black spot in the center, which is the dielectric portal, if you will which is looking inside of the hourglass of the hyperbolical shape of the conjugate geometry of the magnetodielectric of the magnet, that being the conjugate geometry being the toroidal of the magnetic and the hyperboloidal or hourglass shape of the dielectric right to zero point or the plane of inertia. In other words, the more powerful magnet has a more powerful magnetic field, but the field on the magnet is spatially smaller. The only thing a black hole is is a super mass that has attained to point source singularity, which is what a magnet is. It is point source incommensurability. The, the, the black hole attains to point source singularity such that the dielectric overthrows magnetism's ability to keep that object within the physical universe. Simple. Occam's razor follows all field mechanics of Mother Nature, follows natural order. Every point of logic, wisdom, simplicity, of Mother Nature and natural order are followed. A black hole necessitatively must exist. It is extremely simple. It is not complicated. But anyway, you have people like this with PhDs. And let me read you some of the stuff that he says. He said, uh, um, building on previous work he's done with physics, Nobel laureate uh, Robert Laughlin introduced an alternate model that he dubbed dark energy stars. Well, that's kind of touching upon the truth. I mean, they are supermassive stars. They call them dark energy. The reason why, and I've explained this in a recent post, the reason why they call them dark is because they have no, this is not, this is their definition, not mine. They call them dark because they have no idea what it is. Yeah? They've never defined energy. I dare you to find any physicist that's defined the term energy. They can define the work of energy. They can define energy over a period of time with a given vector, but they can't define energy itself. They've never defined that. They've never defined the word field. Don't you find that startling, the most two important words that any physicist should know the definition of? That being energy and that being a field, they've never, ever defined. Never. I'm not actually attacking this guy for not knowing what a, what a, uh, a black hole is, but they're complete atomists. Dark energy or dark matter. Uh, he also calls uh, these uh, black holes droplets of vacuum energy. In other words, the principle of the black hole droplets. Okay, we have a water analogy, droplets of vacuum energy. You see, and here's the evil word. It's like uh, mentioning the devil's name in church, right? You just don't do that, right? Unless you're, of course, scorning the devil. We're saying mentioning, uh, you know, holding a Bible in some sort of evil ritual. It's like, what you got a Bible in you? Just the evil word to physicists is the word ether. They have a hundred, literally, it's that many, a hundred different words for the ether. But they're not using the word ether because ether, and I mean this literally, ether is the evil, no-go, don't-touchy word. They'll use the words like dark energy, vacuum energy, quantum foam. The list goes on and on and on and on. These are just euphemisms for the ether. Anyway, what a black hole is is divinely simple. We just have no parallels for it here on Earth. A black hole is a supermass with no magnitude because... Dielectricity has overthrown magnetism's ability to keep it within the visible universe. All the matter is still there, but it has no magnitude. There is no substantial, by substantial we mean voluminous, magnitude, massive, contains mass and matter, but there's no massive or magnitude there. Because the only reason anything has mass and magnitude is because of magnetism. The only reason.
That's the only reason anything has volume in the universe. When dielectricity, kind of like a prize fighter, you know, let's say a little skinny, puny, skinny guy, you know, super prize fighter just poking with muscles. When dielectricity overthrows magnetism's ability to keep it in the visible universe, it vanishes from this universe. The mass and the matter, the, excuse me, the matter is still there, but it is no longer with magnitude. It is not within the physical universe itself. The footprint of it is still there. The influence of it obviously is still there. That is undeniable. All are in agreement with that. But the matter itself has vanished from this universe. That's Occam's razor. That's natural order. That is simplicity. That is as simple as it gets. That's all it takes to understand what a black hole is. That's it. Mother Nature is not a complicated chick. She's a hairy armpit chick with a hemp skirt, dreadlocks, and muddy feet. She doesn't have a PhD. She doesn't have a calculator. She doesn't do math. She does pressure mediation. She does force and motion, inertia acceleration. That's it. She also does capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity, but those are all modalities of force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. And also, two submodalities of capacitance and resistance, which are also two pressure, pressure differentials of fields. That's all nature is. If you truly understand the conjugate geometry of the universe, you can literally understand every aspect of this universe. You might have to think about it for a second, but it is all abundantly simple and comprehensible, and it follows natural order, and it definitely follows Occam's razor. Anyway, these uh, black hole articles keep popping up, and they're always by uh, prestigious people that you know work in prestigious locations. These People don't have any idea what Mother Nature is, how it works, how simple it is. And they use 10,000 euphemisms for the ether. Dark energy, vacuum energy, quantum foam, droplets of vacuum energy. Oh, that makes perfect sense. That's real scientific. That's, that's some scientism right there, boys and girls. Let me, let me repeat that again while my eyes crossed. Droplets of vacuum energy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so professionally scientific and logical. Mother Nature likes that one. Droplets of vacuum energy. <laughs> These are the people that other people look up. These are the people, I should say. These are the people that ignorant people look up to as uh, knowing what's going on in the world. Well, that guy's got a PhD. He told me it was droplets of vacuum energy. What the hell? <laughs> Oh, God, oh, the droplets of stupidity. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stuff like that humors me endlessly because it's just so fantastically stupid. It's like watching The Wizard of Oz. You're entertained, but you know it's all poppycock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was good to watch that, but it was nonsense. It was like listening to the Jabberwocky poem. You, you, you know the, the poem Jabberwocky? I'm from Alice in Wonderland, I think it is. It's just like this nonsense poem of weird, weird craziness. Droplets of vacuum energy. Just say the ether. See, that's the evil word they can't say.